Good morning. We're happy that you, we've been invited and we can uh, uh, talk about our program in more detail. My name is Michaela Velengerma. This is my colleague Veronica. And now we're trying to share the presentation with you. That this is so because most disabled participants to screening or like try, to try again. I, I should I enable I enabled so you should be able now. Okay. Another try. <coughs> so. Okay, coming. Okay, good. So uh, we're going to talk briefly only about actions in the field of youth. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are, we are sharing. Yes, we can see the screen and we can hear you. See the screen? Okay. Um, probably you have the notion that our program divides uh, countries between program and partner countries. <clears throat> In the, the program countries, they can apply, submit applications. As you have already mentioned, there is one more call there in the, in the autumn. Partner countries, they can join in. So we would uh, probably, as you have a guide in the solid, uh, European Solidarity Corps, uh, we also have a guidebook for Erasmus Plus program. Uh, would be great if you are familiar with it before you start your application. And here we wanted to offer like a glimpse for the next upcoming uh, program, 21 to 27. And uh, just say that regarding inclusion and diversity, which is um, that we want to open up easier access to funding so that it's going to be easier to get finance for uh, to join to reach out to more participants with fewer opportunities and then another thing which is quite groundbreaking is the digital transformations priority where we want to not only support the development of digital skills, but uh, you can combine physical and virtual mobilities. Um, that we think is uh, very interesting. Another priority is participation in democratic life and sustainability, environmental and climate goals. Here, we have a comparison between the two programs, the actual program and the upcoming program. In the current program, there are two kinds of mobilities. One is use exchanges. The other is mobility of use workers. Uh, next, for the next period, what is added is use participation activities. And also a new concept that we're really excited about and that's Erasmus Plus accreditation. So now we would be talking about the actions and the formats in more detail, one after another. The first one is called a use, use exchange. So we wanted to pop the question, if you know what's a use exchange, any of you, if we should go into more detail or if you hear us and you wanna share. Nope. <laughs> okay, so use exchange, it's, um, a short uh, term exchange aimed at young people 13 to 30, could be also for non-students, so that's good about our sector. Um, and for five to 21 days, they get together, they discuss or confront various topics, and it helps them acquire new skills and gain wonderful new experience. We were thinking to give you an uh, a good practice example, and uh, this project is called Social Change in Regional Towns, uh, where the topic is comparing life in town rural areas, Western Eastern countries. The aim is to break down and challenge stereotypes and prejudices, and um, only 33 uh, participants, and in six days, they met only for six days, five countries. Uh, the, there is, this is just a taste uh, of what kind of activities uh, you can tap into 
uh, people usually share experience, discussions, or just task solving in the nature, tours of the surrounding uh, region, talking to people, preparation of an event. Uh, so here you can see lots of activities kind of crammed into six days, but in an easy way. And a lot, uh, I think the impact is out, uh, quite outreaching. Next kind of uh, opportunity is uh, mobility of youth workers. Again, if any of you have a experience or you have participated. Okay. Here, uh, with this mobility, <clears throat> apart from the professional development, we want uh, the organizations to evolve and grow and network. Uh, activities are more varied. It could be training courses, seminars, workshops, on study visits or networking. So it's quite interesting. Next kind of uh, activity, I would pass, uh, pass it to my colleague, Veronica. Mm -hmm. Hello, and I'm Veronika, and I would like to present a new format for a new program period 2021 until 2027, which is youth participation um, activities. These youth particip participation activities are non formal learning activities revolving around active participation of young people. Um, some projects may include physical. Uh, physical events and also virtual compo uh, components. So, and the applicant can be could be uh, organiza organizations or informal groups of uh, young people, which is really interesting. It could be national or transnational. And who is the target groups? Um, um, target group are young people from uh, 14 till till 30 people with fewer opportunities inclusion is highly encouraged um, then decision makers and coach coach uh, who coached the, a group of young people possible activities could be workshops debates role play simulations um, Awareness raising campaigns, trainings, uh, consultations, or um, or digital activities like webinars or hackathons or various um, participation tools. The activities must take place in the country of one or more participation participating organizations or in the country where one or more EU institutions are located. And how can you participate? For applicants, there is deadline on 1st of October 2020, and you should apply to your relevant national agency. And for participants, you should search for Erasmus Plus Youth <coughs> Exchange um, in Facebook, and there are plenty of uh, plenty of Facebook groups where you can um, find the projects projects, and you can apply like participant. And there are some useful links, for example, European Youth Portal or Eurodesk or um, European Commission, where you can find the application or we, we highly recommend uh, Salto websites where are plenty mm -hmm. of uh, TCA and net activities. And uh, we would also mention, as I said at the beginning, the accreditation as a concept, um, only in a nutshell, because it's still in the draft uh, stage and the details will be added before. So the last version will be in the guidebook in 20, released in 2021. The accreditation system is aimed at, camp, uh, at organizations that 
have been active in the youth field for at least two years. They don't need any prior uh, ex experience with uh, Erasmus Plus program, although it is at an, an advantage. From our point of view, we uh, expect organizations that uh, can vouch for high quality outcomes in learning. Uh, this system, why this system? This system enables to receive uh, funding regularly on a regular basis. So uh, instead of waiting for the outcomes of multiple applications uh, each year, you, the company knows or the organization knows, okay, I, what you can expect the funding every year. And the simplified way is, uh, you, once you get the accreditation, you only ask for the budget each year um, in an easy way. We don't need um, lots of details about the activities. Uh, so this will hopefully into more impact and efficient management for the organization. And how does it work? You can apply on a continuous basis till 21st December 2021. You can apply once per call. Um, award criteria, as I mentioned, is the relevance of the organization's profile and experience. And then we expect that the company is able to lay down strategic objectives and think more in advance, the strategic development. And of course, uh, lay down quality management and coordination. Um, okay, so this would be about the accreditation. Uh, and about the formats, we really went through quickly because we got some time limit. <laughs> Otherwise, we would be able to talk about it for hours. Uh, so before we wrap it up, uh, we would like to open uh, space for questions from you. I'm going to ask the youth participation activities. I've, I've never heard of this before. Are they structure to how solidarity process right now? Sorry, we are, uh, the transmission is really bad. Can I ask you to uh, repeat the question one more time? Oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, and if you can speak up a little bit. <laughs> All right, um, so I did have a question about the youth participation activity. Uh -huh. I've never heard of them before. Uh, so our national agency has them, which is them yet. Are they a bit similar to how Solidarity Project looks right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is some, um, some uh, similarity. And for example, there is like unit cost. You became uh, 500 euros per month and 100 euro extra for inclusion, which is really similar to a Solidarity Project. But there is the strong dimension of young participation and this is like where is the difference between solidarity project and youth participation activity but like, uh, the budgeting is still in draft so we can i think the program guide for next program period will publish in august on in, or in september we are still commenting the uh, draft so this is not the final version. Maybe re uh, regarding uh, the theme of uh, youth participation activities, it's kind of similar to KA3 action. Mm -hmm. Like structure dialogue or uh, EU youth dialogue. There is really the strong element of young civic, civic action. Mm -hmm. Civic action, engagement and empowerment of young people. Mm -hmm. Does that suffice? <laughs> I also have a question. I don't know if you hear me. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah very great. Well. Um, regarding the youth accreditation, um, so as far as I understand, um, the organization could can let's say apply once and then continuously submitting some kind of a budget line and then they will receive it in a much easier way the budgeting yeah. right the, the, the money so exactly but, um, and do you do you think that this will be the only way of receiving the accreditation um because for example in the european solidarity corp there's, there's i guess more or less the same case um, 
um, two years ago, I guess, there was this kind of um, opportunity for big organization to, to create some kind of huge partnerships and together they could, um, they could um, propose a long-term project for two years or three years, I don't remember now yet. Um, and then uh, each, well, each year they, they could just submit this kind of easy budgeting file mm -hmm. and they could receive it. Um, and I remember that in this case, uh, only big organization, only experienced organization uh, participated in. Uh, because for smaller organization, for those who are still not very let's say, um, experience. experienced in, uh, in um, you know, in, for example, forecasting or um, proposing some long-term long -term goals, uh, it was quite difficult. Um, so do you think that here in Erasmus will be two paths? I mean, those for, uh, for long-term projects or and those who can, for example, who would like to apply each year, for example, what do you think? Uh, I start from the back. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the small organizations, we, as we said, the advan advantages for experienced organizations with you, right. but we, uh, we want to include everyone and uh, these are our guidelines that also small organizations or without experience, of course, we recommend that they have won the first um, like application uh, the standard application in Erasmus Plus first, but uh, our guidelines are that we're open to uh, any kind of organization that can uh, vouch for the quality. Um, All clear. Yeah. And like the single project in your call uh, will be for the small organization as well. So you can, um, you can apply for youth accreditation or you apply for a like single project in your call. Is it clear? It's clear, yeah, it's clear, okay. thanks a lot. And there could be multiple consortium uh, applying as well. Yeah, it's, it's possible. So, so I think I, I, yeah, it's, actually, it's gonna I, I, reflect I, the same kind of system like in your... Uh, yeah, 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 I guess mm -hmm. this is That's somehow... a good question. <laughs> another opportunity, right, right, right. Okay, mm -hmm. great, thanks. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. I see that uh, it is in the chat, but if we are from partner country and we are just partner in Erasmus Plus uh, project, do we need to apply for Erasmus Youth Accreditation? If yes, then who is responsible for this to give this youth accreditation? I'm not sure, but I think um, do you have national agency in your country? Where are you from? No, they are partner country. Okay, so I think like program country should apply for this and you could be like partner organization for this program, uh, program uh, organization or pro pro join in. Mm -hmm. Join in, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, uh, what came to my mind is that once you have the accreditation, uh, you still, you cannot submit uh, one stand of uh, applications, but you can join in other um, projects. Okay. So once, yeah, but you can be part of this consortium. Can I add to, to, to this from what I understand uh, and I fully confirm what you said uh, for the organizations from partner countries and in our case the Eastern Partnership in Russia uh, mm -hmm. because you cannot apply for projects you cannot uh, get the Erasmus Youth Accreditation because this is so much connected to application, to granting, to, to, to preparing documents for the national agency to get grants. But of course, you can be partner in all those projects. Yes. So mm -hmm. your partner organizations from the program countries, those who regularly apply together with you for projects or those who you will be cooperating in the future, mm -hmm. in case they do not have the accreditation, you will be preparing a full project like now with quite much pages and quite much questions and you can regularly apply together with your partner from program countries to the national agency. But if you're uh, partner has the accreditation, will have the accreditation, it will be 
for all of you, for all the partners in the project, much easier because the application will be simpler. There will be yes, yes. less questions, uh, uh, less burden. Less details, yeah. fewer details. Mm -hmm. So as an as a organization from partner countries, you can encourage your partners in the program countries to get accreditations because it will be easier for you as well. But uh, as this is connected to application process, this is for program countries. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? In the chat are some questions. Okay. In the chat, okay. I can, I can read for you a question from Dimitrios. What's the relation between quality label and uh, Erasmus Youth Accreditation? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to admit, I not uh, I don't know the ins and outs of quality label to tell you the truth. So I am not able to compare Dimitri mm -hmm. exactly. But our colleague Alexander is gonna uh, sp speak about quality label. So yes. I think you can discuss it in more details with Alexandra. So before we go into Solidarity Core, there is still another question from Orhan. Uh, uh, will, uh, it will be safe for youth participation projects as well, managing to apply through national agency in program countries. Uh, so how the application for youth participation activities will be? Same. Yeah, like the application for um, youth participation or um, activities is part of uh, youth accreditation, and as well, um, they separately. are separately in single project in your course. So both of them, because this should be uh, like young friendly or encouraged from young people. So like um, informal group of young people could apply for, for um, youth participation activities as well. Okay. There is one more question. From Martin. Uh, are, are you... Yeah, you're sharing the presentation. I think many of sure, us liked sure, it. Yeah, it. It was really good looking. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, are you sharing it or it's just for the use of your national agency? We, we can send it to participants. Yes. We ask Alex yeah. uh, if uh, he can send it <laughs> to you. Yeah. And yeah, sure. Thank you. Sure. Any so, is there any more questions uh, about Erasmus Plus, uh, the current perspective, the new perspective? Looks there is not. So, thank you that Very we much. we could have joined in and uh, promote our uh, actions and our program, and we in all, all invite you to uh, take part in Erasmus Plus. We're looking forward. Yeah. We share with you our um, email address so you can uh, contact us every time. So thank you very much and uh, have fun. Yeah. Enjoy thank the you very much for joining our virtual train and virtual travel. Uh, I think it was very valuable and let's see. Exciting times is, are coming with the new perspective of the programs. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. So we go into the solidarity core, right, Alex? Okay. Yep, I will just share this screen. Um. So my presentation is not so long as uh, girls <laughs> because unfortunately there are not as many informations about the Solidarity Corp as uh, the Erasmus, as, uh, Erasmus right? Um, but there are some news that are 
less important, they are more important. I will get to the, especially to the quality label process at the end because it's a, it's a big change, I'd say. Um, first, um, here you can see the differences between the period, program period we have now and uh, the program period we have uh, that we will, that is to come. The biggest change uh, there is that um, we have a new activity, which, which are the humanitarian projects, and we are lacking the volunteering partnerships. So the process, the, the system now was that you could, in case of volunteering, you could apply for a, a single project three times a year, or at the beginning of uh, the first program period, you were allowed to apply for volunteering partnerships, which was a long-term three-year partnerships where you could apply easier for just funding. <laughs> this activity is uh, being canceled or rather being transformed into a new, um, let's say, new idea of what quality label is going to be. I will talk about that later. Uh, the activities that are remaining are still basic volunteering activities. There is no uh, radical change there or not being presented uh, as of these days. Jobs and trainings are still uh, still there and solidarity projects also. And these will, um, these will stay, for, as for solidarity projects, they will stay uh, in the same way they are now. They will just uh, be like the application form will look a bit different. Uh, will be more about the actual activities. So there will be a timeline to fill, so it will be more, um, let's say, easier for us to assess uh, how the project is uh, going to be look like, looking like. But as of the philosophical part or the rules, it's going to be the same. The new thing that we have here are the humanitarian projects. And this is the idea of um, sending volunteers to not only to Europe and to partner countries, but also all around the world. Mm, that we can say the third world countries, let's say, but it's not really, yeah, Asia, Africa, wherever. Um, these humanitarian projects are actually somewhat existing under European, uh, under directly, I think, under European Commission. You can apply as volunteer can apply to go for a humanitarian project. The change is that they will put the, those projects under Solidarity Corps. It's going to be a centralized activity, so the um, application process will be different. You will not be able to apply in the national agencies, but you will have to apply for the uh, uh, EACEA -E agency, which is the education um, which is a, it's very long uh, name of the agency, but it's, uh, it's one that's centered in Brussels. It's a similar to what we have now in volunteering teams in high priority areas, also a centralized um, activity. So these projects will um, have this preparation phase for the volunteer, something of a pre-departure training, but longer for a week or so, even longer, where they will prepare for the fact that they are going to work a very differently than a standard volunteer with humanitarian aid and such. And then they will go to a country such as Africa, Asia, wherever they are needed to do their projects. There are questions now how to deal with uh, on arrivals, midterm and such, because there will, could be one volunteer in a country alone. So the educational process there or the educational cycle is now being discussed on how to do it. What will stay is the pre-departure and uh, they also want to involve those volunteers to annual meetings so they can meet with the our national standard, let's say, volunteers. So they will be a mixture of those and the standard volunteers. But as far as the application process goes, uh, you will have to apply if you want to apply to the centralized agency set in Brussels. That's the, I would say, the biggest change in uh, the activities we have. Um, but what is more, more important is the very big change in quality label in 
most of the features there could be. So first thing that we have is that we will be, for some maybe reintroduce the roles of beneficiaries and partners. So when you will apply for new quality label, you will be labeled either as a partner or as a beneficiary. So you can have a quality label where you can actually apply for the grants or a quality label where you can be just partners in the project. So you cannot apply as, a, as your own. And there will be also a different application process for those two, for those two, well, for those two roles. For example, if you just want to be a partner organization, your application process would be slightly shorter. If you want to be an applicant, the application would be longer, the funding rules that there will be, the funding, let's say, would look similar to um, volunteer partnerships that we have, which I will talk about that. Uh, I will talk about that. Uh, that's maybe the thing that I have here, like the new ideas, new way of funding. That's the thing that the, the new quality label will be sort of a transformation between the old one and the volunteering partnerships. So if you apply for a quality label, you will be able to get the quality label for, I think the whole period at the beginning as a partner. And as applicant, you will have to apply for already like a prepared funding. So you will have an action plan where you will state for each year or each year and a half of how many volunteers want you want to reach each year is that. So you will have to think more or less into the future to really strategically process of your program is going to be where you want to reach, let's say, what your long-term long goals will be. How will you fund it? How many volunteers will you have each year? So the quality label will not just be, let's, let's say, how many volunteers I can host now at the, at the time, but also how will I fund them? What will they do and such? So it's much more connected it's uh, with the actual funding process. There is much more, let's say that this will be the main point that we, um, that will be in the project and the applicants uh, and the projects it, on its own will be just, we are now asking for the money that we um, state in the quality label. So the quality label will become the as it looks for now, will become the first and foremost thing that you need to be aware of, where everything is going to be set. And then you will just uh, yearly ask for a budget that you already stated in the quality label. There will be monitorings of the quality labels, much more than uh, uh, as, the, as the projects alone, because the projects will be reduced just to, uh, just to funding. Uh, there will be the, the Say the accreditation process or the evaluation process will be similar to the to what the projects were evaluated now. Now we will evaluate the quality labels. So these two, let's say, combine into a form of a strategic partnership, but in a form of quality label. <laughs> uh, it could sound confusing. I hope it's. Uh, I hope you're getting what I'm saying because uh, it's. Uh, as far as we don't have a paper, we, have, we don't have a written guide. We are waiting for that so we can actually see for ourselves the rules written down. But this is, uh, this is the information we have. It's quite new for us too. And uh, um, I hope it will come out well. Now the crucial point will be the transformation from what the quality labels are now and what even Erasmus accreditations are now and what they will be in the future. And there will be three, uh, let's say, basic three, uh, the, my words, three different process for three different transformation processes. First one, the easiest one is, if you have already a quality label as of now, then you will be transformed quite automatically to a new quality label as a partner organization. So if you right now have a, 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 some kind of quality label, your national agency or your FALTO will ask um, European Commission to just transform it into a new period quality label for seven years for the whole project period. 
but only as a partner organization, not as an applicant organization. There could be some exceptions uh, in case that your national agency or your SALTO uh, could have some points to how your projects were held and if, you, if there were any issues or uh, such, if there were any problems occurred during your quality label, they could shorten uh, your partner quality label at the beginning. But this is very specific for very specific cases where the problems were occurred. So this may happen, but um, let's say the baseline is that every quality label holder will get a quality label for as, as a partner application. Then if you want to become a quality label and applicant where you want to actually beneficiary where you want to apply for a grant, then there will be a shorter application for you. So if now you are holding quality label, you want to continue, you want to ask for the funds for the next program period, you will have to um, fill an application, a shorter one, not the super long one, but a shorter one, where they will sort of transform you for the new project period, but also check you out if you can actually apply for the grant. And the third one, which is the longer one, is if you are currently holding an uh, Erasmus Plus accreditation, or of course, if you don't have any accreditation, then you will have to go through the longer uh, quality level application with all the funding, with all the objectives, with everything. So these are the three main um, transition steps to get to the new quality label. There are, of course, some exceptions. And that uh, mainly, um, uh, let's say they are mainly for the partner organizations, because of course we have a we have a application deadline in October, but the project will start on first of uh, January. So that's already let's say a new program period, but still this, uh, old program period as an as a project. As for the applicants, uh, the beneficiaries, if you want to apply, if you have a quality label now, or if you have a uh, Erasmus Plus accreditation and you want to still apply for a project in October, you can do it with the, with the one that you, that you have. And it's gonna prolong your accreditation uh, for that project. So that is covered. But if you're only a partner and not the beneficiary as its own, you have to have a new quality label starting first, uh, first of January, or let's say latest where your, uh, where your activity starts. So there is a sort of a change or sort of a difference for the beneficiaries and the partners. The partners will have to have the new accreditation, the, the new quality label. The beneficiaries will be prolonged for the project, for the current projects, for the, this program period for specifically October's deadline. The newest deadline or the first deadline for the new project period will be in February. And in that case, if you want to apply, of course, everybody has to have a new quality label. So what is gonna happen now is that uh, we still don't have a, you still cannot apply for the full quality label that will be able in, should be in autumn. So they will be, there will be a lot, I think, a lot of organizations filling those quality labels and trying to get the quality label as fast as possible. So there could be delays. Uh, it's gonna look how it's gonna look, we will see. The automatization process of getting quality labels as partners is now in the run as for Czech Republic. We already are in contact with organizations asking them if they want to continue, if they want to be partners, if they want to have applicants. So this is somehow in running. But as for the beneficiary quality label, uh, there is still, uh, we are still waiting for the application forms for, for autumn. This is the biggest uh, change we have because it's, uh, it's changing the, the meaning of quality label into something much more important than it was now as for also the funding. So that's the biggest, uh, uh, biggest news. We are waiting for 
the guides for some paper, uh, for some words on paper to send you to inform you specifically. Uh, but this is what I wanted to talk about you so you know what to prepare for if you're now preparing your projects with, uh, with the partners. And if you have any questions, then ask them, please. May I ask actually something? <laughs> um, yeah. Alexandra, thank you so much for this clarification. Um, currently, the Polish, also Polish National Agency send us uh, lots of information about, uh, about this process. But I didn't get this um, uh, clearly because currently my organization held this Erasmus um, accreditation. And as far as I, I, I you already said it, that uh, automatically, because we already have a project right now, which will mm -hmm. last until uh, mid, uh, half of the next year. Um, so aut automatically, I understand that automatically my, uh, uh, my accreditation will prolong, that's fine. But what if we would like to apply in the round number one next year, 2021? Mm -hmm. uh, should we already have this uh, new uh, new beneficiary uh, accreditation or should we still wait? Yeah, if you want to apply for the in February, mm -hmm. right? Then you already have to have the new quality label because that's, the, that's already the new program and you have to have the new quality label for beneficiary. So as a beneficiary that you are allowed to apply. Yeah, great, cool, thanks. There is a question in chat. I don't know if uh -huh. I should read. Uh, Carolina is asking, uh, but I'm not sure how to understand it. Uh, Carolina is composing a quality label together with some Georgian NGO. So I understand it's a quality label for Georgian organization. Hope Carolina that I understand it well. And does it make sense? Uh, does it uh, pay off to submit uh, this quality label uh, already now in autumn? when the system changes? Alex, if you can see the question, maybe you yeah, understand uh, it better, I, or Carolina, maybe you can explain um, us more. So you want to have a quality label for the new program period or for this program period? Because of course, if you want to... Yes, like right now, if you don't have any quality label, and you want to apply in the October one, you still have to have an old quality label. So it depends on you whether you want to do this process twice in half a year to apply this year and then the next year to come, or if you wait for the new quality label and apply in February. But maybe, of course, if I'm- Maybe also maybe. because the Georgian organization will not apply, they will uh -huh. be just a partner, right? And uh, so, mm, yeah, if I they, see. even if they apply in autumn, the mm -hmm. activities will start only 2021, right? Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so then maybe it makes sense to apply for the new quality for the new label one. for the Georgian organization, right? Mm -hmm. But the program yes. country applicant organization need to have accreditation now to be yeah. able to apply in autumn, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. For the Georgian, yeah, they can wait for the new ones. But they have to have it the first day of the activities, of course. Yeah, and technically new quality labels will be not evaluated before the new program. Is it so? Or will it start already in 2020? Uh, well, the application process, as I said, will start in autumn. So I think that technically the quality labels will be evaluated before or we will try to evaluate them before January. But of course the first, it's not, I don't think that it's go, gonna happen as that 100 organizations will suddenly want to have a quality label, but only the ones who want to apply in February will come first, then the others who want to apply later will go second. So, but some will be evaluated before the new program, hopefully. And, and in so our Salto, in our Salto for the region, we also, plan to start right ahead. So whenever the application for new quality label is, is there, public, and you can apply, 
we will be simply evaluating and sending the creditors. Yep. Okay. Can I also ask, ask something? Sure. Yeah, I just want to ask, so for this uh, next deadline of October, it's still continuing the previous rules, yeah? There's nothing changing. Even if they if we apply like now and the program will run in 2021, finishing maybe 2022, it's some changes for us with the new one or is still continuing the old rule? Yeah, if you apply in October, you can apply with the quality label that you have now, but your partner organizations will have to have a new one if the activities will start after first um, of January. Mm -hmm. The applicant could be, uh, the beneficiaries could apply with the quality, they ha quality labels they have, but partner organizations will have to have new ones as for activities starting 1st of uh, January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's clear. Okay, so this will be the only change. Uh, every other thing will be the same as before. Yeah? They just need new quality level, but the rules of the program is not, nothing will change, yeah? Well, the rules, um, for because the new quality label is transforming into something different, into, as I said, there will be also funding connected to it. Mm -hmm. So this, in this form, it will change, but for the new program period, not for the October run. Okay, thank you. And there are two questions from Manu. One is, if there are any rumors about cancelling uh, the first round in next year? Mm, I didn't hear any rumors. <laughs> yeah, I think that everybody in the uh, European Commission are quite hyped up, so they want to have it as it is. <laughs> uh, neither, I don't know, I Tomek, if you, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get anything around this. I hope it's not. I hope it will be a smooth, easygoing start uh, and the first round will be there for those who are uh, interested to apply. Especially that, in my opinion, these programs, both programs, are not really changing dramatically. Mm -hmm. There are some changes, uh, but still the formats remain the same. So it's not that we need to learn everything from scratch, right? 